What's up everyone, for today's movie, I will tell you a story of an action movie, starring Jason Statham, with a title, Wrath of Man. So just relax out there, and allow me to tell you what happened in the movie. The film starts with the two guards from a security company called Fortico, who are doing their job in transferring money. Then, a cement truck pulls ahead in front of them, and the driver, along with the rest of his team steps out, and point their gun as they begin to attack the armored van. They then force the guards outside as they start pulling the money bags out of the van, but gunshots are heard in the midst of the chaos. Three months after that incident, a man named Patrick Hill, also called H, is starting his first day on the job with Fortico. Then, he is trained by the other guard named Bullet, and later introduced to other guards like Dave, also known as Boy Sweat, who is antagonistic with him. Then, their manager named Terry, mentions the previous incident wherein the two guards plus a civilian were killed. Another guard also attempts to rile H up when he learns that H is replacing him, but H is calmly able to get the man to leave without a confrontation. Later on, H is out on a job with Dave, when they are forced by armed robbers to stop for them, since they have Bullet captive. The robbers then orders H and Dave to drive to a certain location so that nothing will happen to Bullet. Though Dave is frightened and thinks they shouldn't do what they said, H says that they need to do that for Bullet's sake. When they arrive, they have H throw the money bags into the back of a pickup, but he purposely drops one off the truck. And when one of the robbers steps out, H throws a bag but then quickly shoots the man in the head. He then proceeds to open fire and kill all of them, before chasing the leader through the nearby building. But when H corners the leader and tries to get information on him, he mocks him, that's why he shot him and blow his brains out. After that incident, H actions on the job are met with scrutiny by Terry, but the CEO of Fortico named Blake commends him, and thinks that he should be promoted if this continues. The other guards then applaud his heroic deeds as well. H is then called in to review footage of the previous truck robbery, to see if any of the gunmen in the video seemed familiar to him during the recent robbery. Though he has his eye on one specific gunman, but he tells the others that nothing appears familiar. The two agents are then shown to be working for an agent named King, and thinks that H will lead him and his guys to the crew responsible for the first robbery. A while later, another attempted robbery takes place, with the robbers sprays paint in their van, and attempts to smoke H and Dave out of the truck. However, when H steps out and reveals his face, the robbers appears to recognize him, and promptly retreat without taking the money. Bullet then knows this and thinks there is more to H, calling him, a dark fucking spirit. After that, H sleeps with another guard named Dana, but when he finds a stack of money in her apartment, he interrogates her, and learns that she recovered some of that money illegally from a previous job. Then, an associate of him named Kirsty, comes and bring him some files that he requested. In another instance, it appears that five months earlier, H was with his son Dougie who is visiting the States while on holiday. When he gets a call from his subordinate named Mike, who has happened to be the leader of the group that ran away from him the previous robbery attempts. Mike asks H for help with one last job, because one of his men gets on accident and couldn't do the task. At first, he doesn't want to do it cause his son is with him. But Mike says that he didn't need to be directly involved. So, H drives with Dougie near the docks where the robbery is set to take place, and he only needs to tell Mike which way the armored van is heading. Unfortunately, as H is getting food for himself and Dougie, another group of robbers show up to pull off their own kind of robbery. Then, one of the gunmen orders Dougie to go out of the car. H then sees what is happening and runs to his son, but a gunman with a scar near his eye, shoots and kills Dougie before H can save him, and after that, he shoots H repeatedly as well. Due to that, H is in a coma for nearly three weeks, before recovering and being told that Dougie is dead. He then meets with his ex-wife Jane, who blames him for the death of their son. Later on, he meets with Mike and his other men, who all feel some responsibility for what happened to his son Dougie, and vows to help him look for those who are responsible for it. The group then interrogates a lot of people, which they are suspecting that is related to the group of robbers that they're looking for until one of them give up the name of some criminal brothers. The group then led to a building together with their boss H, where the brothers keep women as sex slaves. But they've got no informations on them, and with nothing else to go by, H kills the brothers and has the men free the women. 
After that, H group decides to lay low for a while. Then, it appears that H starts working at Fortico to gather some possible information regarding his son's killer. He also takes note of the guards working there, which is why he asked Kirsty to get him some files. And that's the background checks on the guards, plus an autopsy report on his son's death. Meanwhile, the perspective of the crew who is responsible for the first robbery, and resulted to the death of H. son shows. The grouper consists of all retired soldiers and led by a man named Jackson, together with his men named Carlos, Sam, Tom, Brad, and Jan. And they are seen planning the robbery during a party for one of Jackson's kids. Later on, the crew goes off to execute the robbery, but they notice H and Dougie arrives at the scene, so Jackson assigns Sam to handle them just in case. And during the robbery, Sam orders Dougie out of the van and to get on the floor. But one of the guard tries to retaliate, so Jan goes off the rails and shoots the two guards dead. And when he noticed that Dougie have seen him, he shots him dead, before shotting H when he tries to run to where his son is. And Jackson and the others tells that they didn't likes the fact that Jan killed a kid. Following the aftermath of that heist, the crew is planning their next and final robbery, which is to score over $150 million in a money depot on Black Friday, and split between them and their man on the inside. The crew then proceeds over to execute their meticulous plan. Meanwhile, Terry briefs all his guards including H, to be more careful cause it's Black Friday and there might be something bad happen. Later on, while Bullet and H are on their way to the depot, Bullet confesses to H, that he is the inside man that tells the robbers, on which cash trucks to hit. He also tells him that he needs to cooperate if he wants to live, which he agrees with the motives in his mind. They then goes to a building where Jackson's crew are, and after that, they rides inside the cash truck and goes to the depot, where they commences the robbery. They then pose Bullet as their hostage, and orders the guards there to open the gate of the vault. But the guards retaliates and open fire against the robbers. Though they put up a good fight, but in the end, the robbers kills them and almost all of the guards that fires at them. Meanwhile, Terry and Dave are inside the cell, and H is on the ground while one of the robbers points his gun at him. Luckily, one of the guards that hides in the cash truck, together with Dana, and one other guard has shot the robber. So, he finds an opportunity to subdue the robber, and kills him. But the other robbers shots the guard to death. In another instance, Jackson and his other men, starts to bag all the money inside the vault and tries to put it in one of the armored van. But Dana and her buddy fires at them, while Bullet comes to Dana's side who has no idea that Bullet is a traitor. And when they give him a gun, Bullet shots them in the head that results to their immediate death. H then tries to fight all the robbers, and manage to kill some of them. But Bullet also shots him and leave him lying on the ground. Meanwhile, the police arrives outside the building, and the SWAT are expected to arrive within 8 minutes. But it is also calculated by the robbers, and they already have an escape route which they plan ahead. Then, Jackson and his remaining men, which is Jan and Bullet, gets out of the building and bumps the police car before escaping the scene. The other police car then follows them, and they also use choppers to hunt them. But the robbers proceed to their plan and goes in one of the building nearby. Inside the building, the robbers plans to transfer the money using ATV, and goes to the secret passage that the police didn't know. Sadly, amidst the chaos earlier, Jackson is shot in the neck, and while Bullet and Jan are transferring the money, Jackson plans to shot Jan using his gun, but he has no strength to do it. So, Jan gets his gun, and slash him in the neck using his knife. But before that incident, it appears that Jackson and Tom go over the plan weeks in advance. They are both concerned over Jan, knowing his behavior of going off plan, especially that there's a lot of money involved. But Jackson is confident that in the end, he will follow orders. Unfortunately, that's not what happened in the end. And after Bullet realizes that Jan is a traitor, he attempts to kill him, only for Jan to act first and blow Bullet's brains out. He then proceeds to get all the money, and escapes the scene using the escape vehicle without being caught or seen by the police. Later on, Jan is in his house planning to get away and enjoys the money, when he suddenly receives a phone call from the phone that's inside the money bag. H then appears behind him and throws him the autopsy report of Dougie, which he reads that Dougie was shot in his liver, lungs, spleen, and heart. H then proceeds to shoot Jan in those exact places, making sure to save the heart for the last shot. After that, 
He leaves the apartment and is met by King, assuring him that the job is done, and that he can presumably recover the stolen money. H then gets in a car with another man and drives away. And that's the end of the story. Thank you for watching everyone, please don't forget to hit the subscribe button. See you in our next movie recap.